Okay, sorry for the delay. Uh, my colleague Jun Kyung and I are going to be talking about visual relations and the way they relate to convolutional neural networks, which you've just heard about. You heard an encomium to convolutional neural networks from Yann Lequin earlier. And so we're going to begin by waking everybody up with a quiz. So I'm going to show you two images, and you're going to tell me in which way they differ. One of them exhibits a property that the other one does not. Okay, you ready? You ready? Okay, here we go. Can anybody see something about one image, a property of items in one image that the other image does not have? I hear murmurs, I hear murmurs, all right. Yes, exactly. You've detected that one image, image one, has two items that are identical up to translation. And the other image does not have that properly. So I'll say to you, congratulations, you are smarter than a CNN. Or so we would like to argue. Uh, and why are you smarter than a CNN? You're smarter than a CNN because uh, humans understand visual relations with ease. They can detect rotational congruency. We know that from Shepard and Metzler in the 1971. They can see when things are enclosed in one another. This is a stimulus from Fleury et al. 2011. And in general, we can construct the boundless, rich, structured descriptions of the world, much in the way that our linguistic capabilities affords us a, an infinite productive uh, set of sentences to describe the world around us. So uh, I'll pose a question to you. Can a CNN detect visual relations? Well, this is a question that was posed before by Ellis et al. in the Tenenbaum group, and uh, Gilser and Benjo later. And to answer that question, this preliminary question we're posing, we're going to take a challenge. And the challenge is called the Synthetic Visual Reasoning Test. This is a test from Fleury et al., 2011. And the test consists of 23 binary classification problems. And each one of these problems has one class differing from another by its possessing a certain rule. So for example, here's two stimuli opposing from one question. Uh, uh, one image has two items that are the same as opposed to the other class in which the items are different. And in another problem, problem number four, uh, you'll see that the two images differ because there are two curves. One is outside the other and one is inside the other. Now, there are 23 of these problems, and our approach to testing CNNs on, CNNs on these is we're going to cast each of the 23 problems, these SVRT, synthetic visual reasoning test problems, as a binary classification problem. For each one, we're going to generate a million training and testing images, and then with an atom optimizer, we're going to train nine different networks uh, uh, parameterized by various architectural features, for example, the size of convolutional kernels, the number of convolutional layers, et cetera. And then from this high throughput method, we're going to choose the best network for each problem, and we're going to plot the accuracy that it produced in order to answer this question, can a CNN detect visual relations? Well, the answer is sometimes. So the graph that you see here is the best accuracy produced by a network in our search, ranked from, from worst to, to best across all problems. The bottom x-axis is the arbitrary problem label. So you can see, for example, that problem seven on the far left uh, had basically chance accuracy. Problem uh, two on the far right had 100% uh, accuracy. So there's, you know, there's something going on. But remember also that these are extremely simple stimuli. So it's a binary classification problem. It's not like a million classes, a thousand classes or something. And also there's only two pixel values. They're small images. So when a model fails, when the, when the search results in basically chance, uh, it's failing quite catastrophically. But I think there's something else we can glean from this. And uh, we'll do it by the following procedure. We're going to consult the problem descriptions provided by the original authors. And every time the problem description contains a word like same or identical, in other words, if it's a problem which two image regions must be compared, it's a same different problem, we're going to color the bar red. And every time the problem description contains a, a spatial word like left, right, inside, something like that, every time a spatial relation must be detected, we're going to color the, car, uh, the, the, um, the bar blue. And uh, so that refines the answer to our question. It's not just sometimes, but it's sometimes and depending on the relation. So you'll see that to the far left, you see all the red bars. Those are the same different bars. Those are same different problems that resulted in these, these minimal accuracies. To the right, you'll see spatial relations problem that were basically solved quite easily across this somewhat coarse search that we did. Uh, the purple bar, you might guess, is actually a, a problem that involves the conjunction of those. 
So what do same different problems look like? They're familiar to you. We already saw that uh, there, there are images in which uh, two items must be the same here up to translation. Uh, now the easy problems are the ones that uh, have some sort of spatial relation. Here, enclosure is being depicted. Now remember, this is the best accuracy. So this is a rather conservative uh, measure. However, um, the, the problems that we, we got from these, these other authors were, were rather arbitrary, they, they're intuitive, but they don't capture the essence of this dichotomy that is beginning to emerge. And so to answer the question about the, the essence of these, these, these two classes of problems, what we're going to have to do is uh, begin our formal experiments and introduce a new data set, what we're calling parametric SVRT. Okay, um, let's take a look at an example stimulus. Very simple. Uh, there are two square binary bit patterns randomly placed in a blank background. You know, remarkably simple. Uh, parametric SVRT, PSVRT as we call, has two problems, spatial relations and same different. Importantly, both problems share the same image data set, uh, but the images are labeled differently according to two different rules. One rule in spatial relations, the label is determined by whether or not the two items in an image are play, uh, arranged vertically or horizontally, uh, depending on the angle formed between the two, um, um, the line, uh, angle of the line uh, formed between the two objects. And in same different problem, the category is decided by whether or not the two items in the image are identical. And as, as we said, it's parametric uh, tests, uh, and the difficulty of each problem really is uh, controlled by the amount of variability in the data set. And there are two parameters for this. Uh, one is called item size, which is the side length of each square bit pattern, uh, which controls the uh, input variability at the item level. Okay? And the other is called the window size, referring to the side length of the spatial boundary uh, in which the two items are randomly placed, which controls the input variability at the level of position. Now, uh, we ran a CNN on the range of different difficulty parameters. Uh, forget the details. One thing I want to mention, 40 million training images, OK? OK, so here's the result for uh, spatial relations. Uh, on the left, we have the one uh, easiest problem parameters. On the right, we have the one for the hardest parameter, uh, problem parameters. Uh, both are learning curves. Evidently, the problem is solved with 100% accuracy, very easy. Uh, all problem difficulties, exactly the same result with very small number of examples. Spatial relations is easy. So let's think about how CNN might solve this problem. Uh, for instance, it can learn a coarse scale kind of a template to detect a vertical or horizontal blob of feature activity uh, using a battery of such templates uh, tuned to different orientations. The CNN can reliably determine uh, the spatial arrangement of the two items. So why is it an easy solution? Because the blob detection, this template generalizes. Uh, thanks to the CNN's characteristic uh, sliding window and you know, pooling operations, uh, each template is by default invariant to item uh, translations. And also, the uh, is invariant, uh, th there's a variability uh, in the bit patterns as well. But because spatial relations doesn't require any discrimination between uh, different bit patterns, so each template really need only to uh, distinguish any bit pattern from the background. Uh, remember that this uh, generalizability arises from the architectural property of CNN, something that is not learned, something that doesn't need to be remembered on per example basis. This explains uh, probably why CNN can learn spatial relations with ease. Unfortunately, this is not the same uh, for uh, same different. Now, we have three different learning curves uh, for easy, intermediate, and hard problems. And um, we found that the CNN can only solve same different for the easiest problem parameters and suddenly breaks beyond a certain difficulty uh, kind of literally over a single step of parameter change. And uh, it, it appears to be highly sensitive to small uh, difficulty changes. And again, remember, we are still using the same image data set. It's simply the labels that are uh, assigned in a different uh, rule. So let's try to understand how the same different problem can be solved by CNN uh, when it is easy enough. Um, remember that the CNN is now tasked with the comparison between the two bit patterns and not just, just detection of any bit pattern. And therefore, 
Unlike in spatial relations problem, you no longer want the templates to be just invariant to any bit pattern. Uh, rather, you want them to be somewhat selective. Now, one kind of obvious strategy is to simply learn all possible pairs of identical items. But quite obviously, this is an extremely expensive solution to learn uh, due to combinatorial explosion. So maybe a different so strategy. So how about having a subtraction template between the two, right? Similar to Gabor filters, you can have a positive and negative subregions in, 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 in the weights so that the, uh, you know, the template can perform subtraction between the two regions in the image. N uh, nothing new. Uh, at least we know that this strategy ensures that the templates do generalize to item level variation. But then the problem is that the subtraction templates don't generalize to positional variation. These templates, by definition, are unable to discriminate between bit patterns and the background, and this makes each template susceptible to producing spurious same difference signal as a result of possible positional misalignment. So in this sense, same difference poses a kind of a dilemma to a CNN. In one strategy, uh, the templates do generalize to positional variation, but not to item vari variation. In another strategy, the templates generalize to item variation, but fail to generalize to positional variation. In this sense, we think same different, uh, there is no sample efficient strategy in CNN for solving same different. So uh, in fact, one consequence of this inability to generalize is the fact that gradient descent in, while training a CNN is highly uncorrelated between different batches of images. And that's exactly what we found. On the left, we plotted the number of training examples required uh, in order for the training to you know, escape this chance level accuracy uh, and plot it against increasing problem difficulty. And what we found is that as a problem difficulty increases up to this intermediate level, level where it makes this uh, you know, transition from easy to basically impossible, the average number of required training examples does not only go up, but also it becomes highly, highly random. Uh, as, you see, as you can see from this red error bar, you know, zero to 20 million here. Uh, this is a kind of pattern you would expect, expect in binomial distribution. Uh, as if the whole business of learning is a probabilistic coin flip-like event, such pattern emerges because gradient uh, directions are uncorrelated, as thus uh, learning is more like random search uh, until you find a tiny slit through which to arrive at a global minimum. So let's draw a couple of conclusions. Uh, the first conclusion, as JK said, is that same difference is strictly more difficult than spatial relations uh, for somewhat intuitive reasons uh, for CNNs. Uh, spatial relations can be solved with these uh, blob-like temp templates. Incidentally, this is the way that the Desimone group thought that uh, LOC could solve spatial relations, though we have reason to, to doubt that. A uh, second conclusion is uh, for same different, uh, even when it does learn, learning is done in some kind of uh, unsatisfying way. Basically, it resembles the random search. In other words, the, the energy landscape is highly irregular and the global minimum is completely isolated. So SD, uh, same different features don't generalize from batch to batch. So um, if we were going to get political, we would say that template matching is just not an ideal strategy for visual relations problems. But we can get even more political when we say, are CNNs good cognitive level models of visual reasoning? And in our opinion, obviously not. So there's a capacity limitation, which we've been alluding to. So in feed-forward networks like CNNs, every, everything it has to learn is stored in the form of these, uh, and a finite set of kind of atomic representations, which we call features, compared to classical, more symbolic systems like automata that combine a finite set of atomic representations with an indefinite number of non-atomic expressions. Uh, in other words, uh, in classical systems, only some things are features and other things are constructed on the fly according to rules. There's a lot to be said here about levels of analysis and the Turing equivalency of RNNs and things like that. But still, your Fodor and Pilishin bells should be ringing. Uh, so there's no non-atomic representations. What's more, uh, there are mechanistic limitations. So the CNNs don't have the things that people speculate we use to solve these visual relations problems, for example. Uh, Frank Canary claims that we need attention. Uh, Clevinger and Hummel say we need working memory. And of course, we have all the other things we've been talking about today on the cognitive side of things, object representations, intuitive physics, and in general, all the things that would support this on-the-fly expression building. And there's a kind of final 
kind of computational limitation or syntactic limitation, which is that visual relations have combinatorial structure. You know, they're abstract rules and not image features, and that changes the nature of the problem. So it resembles a bit more like formal language theory and a bit less like statistical learning. Incidentally, there is a generalization of formal language theory to two dimensions. Uh, so stimuli have structure that makes the problem hard. And we're going to close with a teaser. And the teaser is what would a model of visual relation detection look like? So what you see here is a diagram whose details you can ignore. But um, uh, the only thing I'll call your attention to is that this is a hierarchical reinforcement learner that we are working on that we suspect might be suited to this type of problem solving. It combines a perceptual component, a component with CNNs at the bottom and two uh, kind of necessary cognitive components an attentional controller that can train a window of sliding attention over the scene, and a mnemonic component that can store representations in working memory. And if we had not had, oh, this, by the way, resembles a model of Vishnevitz at all. Um, if, we had had, if we had not had an uh, internet error, I could show you the video here in which uh, the yellow attentional window slides over this simple scene uh, training itself over two blue bars, trying to determine whether or not they are the same up to translation, having never seen them before. And uh, with that, we, I hope we convinced you that this was a difficult and interesting problem, and we'll thank our colleagues, some of whom are in the audience, and we'll also thank our, our government overlords. Thank you. Hi, um, here. Hi. Uh, rather than just training an entire CNN on these kind of like images, have you tested any pre-trained networks with like back-end training on your task? That's my first question. And the second one is you talk about how CNNs are not representative of visual cognition like humans, but you didn't show us any plot other than that one audience example of correlations between error patterns of humans and the machines on those kind of tasks? Uh, so uh, to answer your first question, to my recollection, yes, we did uh, uh, train, uh, fine tune a, a pre-trained network. I think we used VGG 16 or 19, and I don't think we saw any incremental improvements, although it was much better than one would, one would expect. In fact, uh, we also uh, tested a range of uh, CNN parameters, although we didn't present it here, a varying number of layers, number of uh, you know, features, convolutional kernel sizes, uh, but what we found is that you can always find a problem parameter, a pretty easy one, where CNN simply starts to break suddenly. Um, uh, so so, so we, we have not performed a human comparison, though this has been done before by uh, the original authors, Fleury et al., uh, 2011, in uh, PNAS, but they don't use CNNs. Uh, they just use black box classifiers like Adaboost uh, and other things like that. So I think this is very interesting work, but you should be really careful about uh, strong negative claims mm -hmm. because uh, you know, one may come up with a different architecture that solves the problem. In fact, in the paper, with the paper that I did with uh, Jalar Grosser that, that you mentioned in 2013, uh, a couple of years later, someone at DeepMind found a variation on the architecture with a variation on the optimization procedure which actually solves the problem, and it's a very similar kinds of problems yes, to the ones absolutely. you've detected. Mm -hmm. so, it might be that this architecture works. Um, so, 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 you know, just dampen your claims. I, I'm very sympathetic with uh -huh. what you're uh, saying, but uh, be careful because you can't test all the possible architectures and mm -hmm. ways of training and so on. In particular, uh, you know, lots of people now combine attention with uh, these kinds of models. Yeah. So, uh, you know, it, it could make a big difference as an example. Well, we'll take that as a, as a comment, so thank you. <laughs> thank you so much. <laughs>